Okay, so we have a problem. Suppose that you walk 12 meters, 20 degrees west of north. You then turn and walk 20 meters, 40 degrees south of west. Where do you end up relative to your starting position, including the angle relative to your starting position? So this is a vector addition problem. And so I've represented it in the graphical format where we, where we add tip to tail. So here's my vector A, which is 12 meters, 20 degrees west of north. I then turn and walk 20 meters, 40 degrees south of west. If I put those tip to tail, my result in vector C is what I'm interested in, going from the beginning of vector A to the head of vector B. So how do I determine this numerically? We're going to do it using our component form. So the first thing that's going to help us understand is I like to do things relative to the positive x-axis. So 20 degrees west of north, if I were just going to represent that vector, so vector A, here's my coordinate system, 20 degrees west of north as shown in the picture is right here. This is the angle relative to positive x. That angle is my 90 degrees plus my additional 20 degrees. So this is an angle equal to 110 degrees for vector A. What about vector B? Well, for vector B, if I just don't worry about it head to tail, but just take that vector and say vector B is 40 degrees south of west at a magnitude of 20, that's this angle relative to the positive x-axis. So that's 180 degrees plus an additional 40 degrees. My angle is 220 degrees relative to the positive x-axis. Now I like to use vectors relative to the positive x-axis because then I can use sines and cosines appropriately for my coordinate system. So let's look at that. We have two vectors, A and vector B. And if I want to add them vectorally, mathematically, vector algebraically, to get vector C, I need to break these up into their horizontal and vertical components is the method that I'm going to use. So vector A, what is its horizontal component? Well, vector A's horizontal component is its magnitude 12 times the cosine of its angle relative to that positive x-axis, 110. And its vertical component is 12 times the sine of its angle relative to the positive x-axis. All right, what about vector b? Well, vector b is its magnitude 20 times the cosine of 220. And 20 times the sine of 220 for its vertical component. Now I can simply add these two, these two up. I can add the horizontal component to get the horizontal component of my vector C, and I can add the vertical components to get the vertical component of my vector C. So 12 cosine of 110 is minus 4.104. I'm going to add that to 20 cosine of 220, which is minus 15.321. This is going to be the horizontal component of my vector C. I'll do that. I'm going to say equals. So when I do that, my horizontal component of vector C is negative 19.425. That's the horizontal component of vector C. What about the vertical component? Well, 12 sine of 110 is 11.276 plus 20 sine of 220 is negative 12.856. So my vertical component of vector C is equal to negative 1.5 Eight, zero. Now, let's just pause there for just a second and see if this, these components are consistent 
with my graphical analysis. So if I did my tip to tail process, I see that result in vector C is gonna be pointing to the left. So the horizontal component should be negative. Sure enough, it is. And I also see that my vertical component is in the downward direction, below the horizontal meridian. So it too should be negative. So at least we're consistent with our graphical representation. All right, well, what do I now do with these two components if I want vector C? We'll use our trigonometry. Remember the magnitude of vector C is the square root of the horizontal component squared plus the vertical component squared. And if I look at the square root of these two component squares, I get a magnitude of 19.489. Now I only have two significant figures, so we're gonna round that to 19. All right, what about the angle? Well, the angle we take, to get the angle, we take the inverse tangent of the vertical component over the horizontal component. And when I take the inverse tangent of these two values, I get an angle of 4.65 degrees. Now here's where we have to be careful. We have to remember that the tangent gives us angles in the first and fourth quadrant. Well, this is actually telling me that the angle of my resultant vector is here, 4.65 degrees, pointing up and to the right. But we know it's pointing down because I have a negative vertical component and to the left because I have a negative horizontal component. So it's really along the same line, but pointing in the opposite direction. So to get the appropriate angle, I add 180 degrees. So my angle is gonna be 4.65 plus 180 degrees, since it needs to point in the opposite direction, which tells me the angle is 184.65 degrees, which I'm gonna to round to 185 degrees. All right, so my magnitude, this is in meters, my magnitude is 19 meters headed in the direction of 185 degrees. Okay, so as a recap, first understanding our angles. Doing a graphical representation is a great start. I like to represent angles relative to the horizontal positive axis. So redrawing those vectors, so I really appreciate what those directions are. Breaking those components up into their horizontal and vertical, breaking those vectors up, excuse me, into the horizontal and vertical components. Then I can add them algebraically. I get my horizontal and vertical components and my resultant, put it back together to get the magnitude using Pythagorean's theorem and the uh, definition of tangent to get the angle. Recognizing that tangent is in the first and fourth quadrant. So I have to pay attention to my components to know if I add that 180 degrees to get me into the appropriate direction based on my problem. All right, good job.